Hey y'all, Chris from Thunder Laser here. Wanted to talk to you about setting up a uh, print and cut file for your Thunder Laser that has a head camera and an overhead fixed camera. For this example, we're going to be doing a, a little Halloween themed uh, leatherette patch, if you want to call it, uh, on our uh, Thunder Laser Titan using Laser Maker. So I've got uh, a UV printer, which is what we're going to use as the print medium. You can, of course, use other print mediums, say like dye sublimation. Uh, you know, that's a common one, but I'm going to be using the UV printer. So when we go to set up the file, uh, we got to, you know, create basically two files. And the two files have to uh, work together so that you get the optimal output from the laser and you get the optimal output from the, the printer. So in my file setup, and I'm, I'm using Affinity, uh, it's a pretty inexpensive software. Uh, you can use your other softwares. You just need to be able to manipulate your graphics, export a vector file, say a PDF or SVG, and uh, output the PDF or whatever format your printer requires, right? So nothing particular here about Affinity makes it the go-to. is just what I have. So over on my layer setup, you can kind of see uh, some of the basic shapes that I have. So I've got my marker uh, for laser maker. It's going to use solid black circles. Uh, we're going to use two per basically grouping. Uh, right now I've got an eight millimeter circle. Uh, small as you want to go, say six millimeters, and you can go larger than that. Probably wouldn't go over, say, 20 millimeters. At that point, you're getting kind of extreme large. You got to remember the head cam is going to be reading this, so you don't want to go too big. It needs to be within the confines of the head camera. I've got my printable. Uh, that's going to be basically, if I turn that off, you'll see that's going to be what I want to print. Uh, and I'm also going to print the markers with it. So those two go together. And then I've got my cut contour. So I turn off that. You'll see the cut contour. That's the path I want the laser to follow when it cuts out. Now inside the printable, uh, I've got the actual graphic. And then I got a little bit of a bleed line. You always want to give yourself a little bit of space uh, beyond your normal, you know, expected, uh, uh, expected cut. Um, simply because, you know, with these vision systems, with the lasers, with the human error, with shrinkage from printing, everything that goes into it, it's not going to be 100% exact, but it's going to be very, very accurate to the point where this bleed line is suffice and when we finish the cut, it should blend in and trick the human eye. The idea is if you had a different color material behind it, so on this leatherette, I could be printing on brown. Uh, I don't want that brown to show. Um, so I just do the bleed line. Very common uh, vinyl stickers use it. Just about any print and cut applications to have a bleed line, no matter what brand it is. So we've got that set up. So the idea here in Laser Maker is I'm going to uh, array these out um, using, you know, the functions inside of Affinity is a little different than array, but it's similar. Uh, and space them out in a way that when I export the SVG, I can print them in the same format that I'm going to cut them. And again, those can be two separate files. And I have to be very strict on the dimensions, right? So I need to know what I'm setting it up for. Uh, you don't have to follow like 84.5 millimeters. You know, it could be some random number because we're exporting an SPG, but sometimes it's easier to remember. So then we go set up the values in Laser Maker. It's a round number, 85 millimeters. That's probably what I'm going to go with. All right. So I got my basic grouping. Uh, I'm going to take my printable and use the function in Affinity, which is uh, Control J, which creates a duplicate. And then I'm going to add, I actually, I need to do the uh, cut contour with it. So let's back that out, select both, like that, select both, and then control J or command J, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to add in uh, 85 millimeters to the X direction and you'll see it creates a second copy. And then I'm going to hit the command J as many times as I want and create a row of patches. So let's do, we got, let's do a fifth patch. Now I've got those, I need to create a second marker, right? So in order to be more accurate, having this marker is going to help. So I'm going to take this other marker and, uh, man, J it, 
and we'll add, so if we did 80 at a time, uh, let's just about 80, let's add about 400 to it. A little shy, not a big deal. We'll just keep moving it. So I'm going to add 30 more. Eh, a little too much. Subtract it. All right. So now we're at whatever distance that was. And then we're going to add some to the Y direction. So I added 60. So I can do to figure out the spacing. It's like both of them. Uh, I'm 420 millimeters in X and 60 millimeters in Y. So because I got an eight millimeter circle, I just subtract that from the, the spacing shown here. I can use that in Laser Maker. All right, so this is what I'm gonna call a group. So if I group that together, it's one. What happens in Laser Maker when uh, go by group is it's going to treat each group as its own project and it's going to run them separately. And what's cool about that is I can set markers for every group. And so if I've got this row of patches, so I'm going to use command J again, and, uh, we'll add 75. Do it. Do it again. Each group or each now row is going to automatically scan the two dots and readjust if it needs to, to cut out the five patches. So I don't have to set up just two points across the entire sheet. Like other softwares, I can set up multiple points per group and then it will readjust by group. So that makes it much more accurate than just having two points across the full span. So this is a 12 by 24 sheet. If that other dot was just here in the bottom right corner and the other one top left, it's not going to be the most accurate, right? Because we got a big sheet and only two points of reference. The other cool thing is in Laser Maker, it is going to pick up that circle for us. So using the overhead camera and the uh, head camera, it's going to pick it up. So no longer do I have to sit there and move the red dot and uh, you know try to find the center crosshairs or whatnot. It does it for us. So we can make as many groups as we want, and you can actually. Uh, make every patch have its own two circles just the caution there is it's going to take time to scan the circles so you know if you did every patch it's going to do that scan for every one of them and you know it could take 10 seconds to cut but 30 seconds to scan you know something like that so you got to keep that in mind whenever you're setting it up all right so i got the basic file set up here uh and then it comes to export so everything in here i want to print except for my cut contours right I got to get those off. Um, at this point, they're in the background, so we really can't see them. So we should be able to export. So you would use whatever command it is, export your PDF. Uh, I'm going to do selection only, and you export it. And then when I want to do uh, just my cut lines and markers i'm going to turn off all my printables and now i've got just my graphics that i need to export to then re-import into my cutting software so i'm going to do this as an svg um, selection only again export now I can also export as a PDF, but I got to make sure when I do, I'm going to call this cut line. I do like how PDFs import in certain softwares. Uh, it's just going to depend on what you're working with SVGs with their DPI rates, you know, 92 or 96 or 72 can sometimes cause problems with scaling, but sometimes PDF is a little better there. But as you can see, you set up two files. One's going to be your print, one's going to be your cut. And we got to marry those two at the uh, finish line at the laser. So the next thing to do, go print, and then we'll go set up Pleasure Maker, and we're actually going to cut this out. This is part two of the uh, Titan print and cut with the Laser Maker using the overhead camera and the head camera. Uh, part one was me kind of showing how to set up a video for print and cut uh, or your file print and cut so that you could have your printable graphic and your cutting graphic i've modified that a little bit for this example uh, i'm using regular printer paper and when i did that tutorial it was based on printing on like a wider sheet of acrylic so this is what we've got
All right, so for setup, I've got Laser Maker here on the screen. I'm going to import my file that I exported. So I'm going to file open, grab that file. I've got it as a PDF, um, and it's got some data in there, some vector data, and going to have to trim it out a little bit to make it work for Laser Maker, depending on what I exported. So uh, in Laser Maker, I'm going to delete some shapes that aren't needed. These are basically we're blanking circles for the uh, white background for the marker dot. And then I'm going to set my layers up for print and cut. Now in Laser Maker, you will put your uh, locating dots on a specific layer. It's going to be, or a specific type of layer. It's going to be a mark layer. And then your cutting graphics will be on one of the other layers. So I'm going to use this red layer. And since I'm cutting paper, high speed, low power is really all I need. And so this is it. That's my file setup. This is a basic one group uh, print and cut, and we've got it set up. Now in the machine, I've got a piece of paper in there with this graphic printed onto it from a regular household printer. And I just kind of haphazardly place it into the machine. I don't have to worry about lining it up too terribly well, right? The cameras are gonna do the work. So going into the uh, laser maker, we'll hit processing start. And because I have a mark layer, it's going to pull up the camera data. So it's going to do a uh, screen grab of what's on the bed. And then it's going to present that to us for picking where our circle dots are. Now, based off of the previous one that I've done, it's going to try to say, hey, I saw this before. You want me to continue on for this tutorial? I'm going to tell it no. But at the end of this, You'll see why that is so helpful. All right, so we've got our graphic. Uh, the picture was taken. And to start out with, I put in my uh, size, which is eight millimeters for my circle dot. Click next step. Uh, and then I'm going to pick the two that I want. So just got to get kind of close, zoom in, select the circles, and then click next. What you'll see is the camera is going to go around using the head camera and scan those dots. That's what makes this very accurate. Once it's done, we can go on to the next step where we will set our layout. And for this one here, we're just a one by one. If we had more groups that had more of the locating dots of the same pattern, we would enter that in. But we're just one by one. So I'm going to select that and then click next step. Then it's going to send this down to the machine and the machine is going to run it. Now, while it goes to run, it goes to verify those dots again, and then it will process the cut file. Now, once it's done, we can actually throw in another sheet. So if you're doing a batch process of print and cuts, you can clear this out and do another sheet. So let's look at the cut lines, and uh, we'll throw in another sheet. So the thing to look at is how clear your uh, bleed lines are from one print to the other, or as being even, and then top to bottom. I say that's pretty dang good, right? So I'm going to move that out of the way. Take another one identical to it. Throw it in there. We'll prep the camera for another angle of this. And then go back to this software and say process new material. And then my hands are off the machine. My hands are off the, uh, the mouse. And it is going to go through looking for those dots again. after updating the images and it's going to cut it out a second time for me. And that's it. That's the basics of print and cut. The Pleasure Maker and the dual red cameras is pretty simple. You're not having to line up a red dot to the center of two crossing lines and then the reprocessing of what you already set up is done by the camera system.
Hope this helps. Y'all let us know if you have any questions.